From our Milky Way galaxy to remote regions billions of light years away, space is jam-packed with really weird stuff. It's hard to comprehend some of the concepts and things that we find in outer space because they're so profoundly different from life on our own planet. The more we learn, the less we know. So there's a seemingly limitless supply of strange things uh, about the universe that remain to be discovered. The universe is filled with objects and all sorts of mysterious phenomena that we still don't fully understand. Strange as it may seem, astronomers have discovered interstellar clouds actually filled with the same kind of alcohol found in beer. One of the strangest clouds is one that's filled with organic molecules, in particular with ethyl alcohol. Now that, of course, is the alcohol we drink. And so the idea that there could be this huge cosmic distillery is kind of a fun idea. But in fact, that's correct. Giant molecular clouds are enormous complexes of gas and dust. Some of them are up to a thousand times the size of our own solar system. Their dense and sizable cores allow for the formation of complex molecules that can produce a cosmic cocktail. In this microbrewery, barley, water, and yeast are used to produce alcohol. Whereas in interstellar molecular clouds, it's dust grains that serve as the key nucleation site for simpler molecules like molecular hydrogen, water, and carbon dioxide to come together and react chemically to form more complex molecules like ethyl alcohol. When the dust grains migrate closer to the center of the molecular cloud, they start to approach the central star that's forming in its core, and this heats them up, possibly enough to evaporate some of the complex molecules like ethyl alcohol off and into interstellar space. Thank you. Cheers. So just like this microbrewery, the dust grains in interstellar molecular clouds serve as meeting places where lonely molecules can form more complex molecules. The first alcohol cloud was detected in 1975. Since then, many more of these truly strange space clouds have been observed. The cloud G34.3, which resides in the constellation Aquila, is 1,000 times the diameter of our solar system. In fact, in G34.3, there's enough ethyl alcohol to supply 300,000 pints of beer every day to every single person on planet Earth for the next billion years. That'd be one heck of a party. The only downside is that it would probably give you a pretty bad headache because it's also mixed in with hydrogen cyanide, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, ammonia, and some fairly other not-so-nice chemicals. They may seem like inebriated clouds drifting aimlessly in space. Yet, as unbelievable as it may sound, these clouds eventually form multiple star systems, planets, and maybe even life. In the outer edges of the cloud, these frozen dust grains with their complex molecules still remain intact. And in fact, we know them today as comets. And it's thought that these comets may be responsible for bringing some of these more complicated molecules into the inner solar system. And in fact, they may have seeded our own planet with these molecules which are the building blocks of things like amino acids, which we need for life. Our sun and Earth were formed out of an interstellar cloud, much like this cloud. And if you've got the right ingredients, the right organic ingredients, you've got the right ingredients for life. It may seem really weird that there's this giant cloud of alcohol floating through space, but one of the things that I love is how common organic molecules, alcohol being one of them, is throughout the galaxy and the universe. We find them everywhere. 
If you pulverize the Earth into powder, that's basically what an interstellar cloud is like. All the chemicals that make us up. Alcohol-laden clouds may have helped to sow the seeds of life on Earth. Yet, as incredible as it may sound, life itself may actually exist in other types of truly weird clouds. Venus, the second planet from our sun, has a hot, hellish surface. Yet strangely, its clouds, which hover at an altitude of around 30 miles, bear temperatures that may be habitable for life. The temperatures are roughly the same as Earth's surface. The atmospheric pressure is about the same as, as Earth's surface. So you might say if life can exist here on Earth, perhaps it can exist in similar conditions on Venus. If life does exist in the clouds of Venus, how did it get there in the first place? It's thought that the atmosphere of Venus is the product of what's called a runaway greenhouse effect, where the buildup of carbon dioxide causes the temperature to rise at the surface, which if there were any liquid oceans of water on Venus, they would have eventually boiled away and escaped into space. Then it may have migrated up to the upper, more hospitable layers of the atmosphere. Life as we know it needs water. The clouds of Venus contain water in the form of concentrated sulfuric acid. Here on Earth, scientists have found organisms called extremophiles that thrive in similar acidic liquids, such as the hot springs in Yellowstone National Park. So some have speculated that organisms could survive in the clouds of Venus and they may have even evolved ways of making use of available ultraviolet light, much like plants use visible light for photosynthesis. You have a lot of chemistry going on in the clouds. You've got sulfurs and you've got hydrogen and, and other elements that are needed to harbor life and to sustain life. And those are abundant at those altitudes. So it's not inconceivable that life could survive or exist in, in the cloud layers of Venus. One method to test whether life could exist in the clouds of Venus is to examine the clouds above Earth. Measurements here on Earth, for example, capturing particles of cloud and examining them in the lab have shown that very small organisms and bacteria can actually survive just sort of floating through the atmosphere being caught up on updrafts and just gusts of wind. And they can perhaps survive in the atmosphere for long periods of time. As an analogy, the same type of behavior might be occurring on Venus. So if there were life in the Venusian atmosphere, it might just be kind of flitting along for long periods of time. NASA may one day send a mission to Venus to find out if there's life in its clouds. But right now, scientists are keenly interested to learn whether another truly peculiar planet exists in our solar system, a mysterious planet that has yet to be discovered. Planet X is a hypothetical planet that may exist beyond Neptune. Planet X is sort of a generic designation for an unknown planet that's somewhere in the outer solar system that remains to be discovered. Astronomers began to speculate there might be a missing planet when observing the Kuiper Belt, a repository for icy rocks beyond the orbit of Neptune. The outer edge of the Kuiper Belt is called the Kuiper Cliff because the density of space rocks drops off steeply here. This could be caused by Neptune's gravitational pull or perhaps by an unknown planet. One hypothesis for the drop-off in Kuiper Belt objects that we see after about 50 or 55 astronomical units is that there's a planet lurking out there somewhere which could be sort of hurting them inside of that region. Scientists have wondered for decades how many planets our solar system harbors. Is there really a Planet X? 
Originally Pluto, when that was discovered, was designated as Planet X. More recently, there have been discoveries of other Kuiper Belt objects, things like Eris and Sedna, for example, that have been assigned the designation Planet X. There still remains to be the, the discovery of a very large object in the deep solar system. So there's sort of still this idea that a, a Planet X or a mysterious hidden planet is, is out in the, the solar system somewhere. Scientists may soon solve the mystery of the so-called Kuiper Cliff. If a Planet X really exists, these cosmic sleuths will find it. We think that we should be able to learn whether or not there really is such a planet relatively soon with a new generation of large-scale surveys that are going to detect anything out there. Planet X may or may not exist. But there are other planets that have been observed far off in space that are truly out of this world.